Get Warrior Tough, Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. All right, we're back at it. Get Warrior Tough, the most monumental hour in media anywhere. Leadership and mental toughness coaches Andrew Whitman and the Dutch Coleman. All right, Dutch, before the break we were talking about this question, what could you do right now, today, to start thinking like an elite warrior? And we and we went through the four levels of thinking, you know, from autopilot negative to positive and then climb the ladder to the critical thinker. Uh, I'd like to give the folks just a little bit of taste of some of our process, uh, some of how we get to how we know when we're being a critical thinker or not, um, and just kind of give them some of the stuff that we do. Just give them a little taste. Is that all right, man? Oh, amen. Yes. All right. So the first thing that we do is, is we take uh, an honest assessment and we have to decide, are we being objective or delusional? Objective or delusional? And this is where the facts uh, come in. You know, I, we don't want to, like, necessarily look at the Like, when, when I was talking about saying things like, I can never afford that, or we can never get ahead, or I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, is that actually objective reality, or is it delusion? Absolutely delusion. Right. And people would say, no, I'm just telling how it is. Like, no, man, because for you to say you could never afford that is a bunch of nonsense because you afford whatever you want to afford. But, you, you know, you, you get you get comments like, I'm just being honest. I'm just being real. I'm just being when that's the you couldn't be further from honest or real. Right. But that's the thing that they say when when what they're really saying is I'm just being honest about me having given up already. That's the only thing you're being honest about <laughs> is that you gave up. So we're trying to get you from there. So, again, if you if you gave up, then we're not talking to you. If you're someone that's that's decided you're not going to give up, we're talking to you. So you can't say things like I'm just being real. I'm just being honest, because that's the only thing you're being honest about. But once you once you come into our circle and you enter our world, there is no giving up. So we're talking, you know, in facts, we're talking about what's really real and what's really real is none of that is true. All that is nonsense. And it is, it is, it is all possible. Right, and so we're going to call you on that self-talk. So that's what, you know, an and elite warrior, they call themselves out on their self-talk, and they make the course correction, right? So um, even when we say, I did this, uh, I did a chapter in the book called Avoid the Don'ts, right? This is just how, how many times that we think, uh, I think Shad Helmstedler, uh, in, uh, he's a psychologist who did a study, and, and the, the data that he came out with was like the average person thinks between 40 and 50,000 thoughts a day and like 87% of them are negative. Mm. And when you think about it, how much, how often are we phrasing things in a negative manner? Like I can't, I don't. And even when I, I was coaching somebody this week and I asked them, I said, now we, we need to know what your target is. What is it that you do want? Well, tell me what you want out of life. And they began telling me uh, uh, automatically. And I already said, I even told them, I said, don't tell me what you don't want. Here we are. Not what you don't want, but what you do want. Started telling me exactly what they didn't want, but couldn't phrase it in a way of what, the, what it was that they did want. So avoid the don'ts. So rephrase stuff from like, don't miss to hit the target. So instead of saying, or don't spill your milk, say, get it to the table, you know, all in the cup. Think, I know that sounds like semantics, but if you train yourself, the elite warrior trains himself to, and listen, even guys like you and me, Dutch, and they, here's the study say that we work at it, we still, out of our 40 and 50,000 thoughts a day, it's still like 70%. So it's come down from like 87 down to like 70%. So it's a huge difference, but I still catch myself with the don'ts and, and phrasing things in a negative way. You know, the way I do is, and the thing is, we, we know what's, again, we, we know how to deal with what's real. You know, people, when people think about us without having gone through any of the training, they think, you know, we're living in fantasy land, right? Because we won't say certain things or we don't do certain things. We don't have the negative self-talk. But, but if you think about what we're saying, people are saying, I can't, well, we're just saying, I haven't yet. So that's a that's a tremendous difference. Oh, I, I won't I won't say I can't. So if you're telling me, well, have you ever done it? I haven't yet. That's that's my. That's different that's than I can't. Neg- right. Absolutely. That's completely because when you say I can't, I was reading uh, an uh, an article by Rebel Brown. And she's one of you know the influencers in my life, right? That she's that's the most destructive word out there is can't, right? And and I'll even say it like this. Even what, like yeah, we have trained our kids. Kimmy and I have trained our kids. So. Instead of saying, I'm getting sick or I'm sick, we say, I'm fighting off this or I'm fighting off that. And that sounds like it's semantics, but it's not. It's a huge shift. So I'm telling my body, 
and I'm taking my 11 million bits to my 126. I'm pointing that 126, and I'm saying I'm fighting this sickness off. I'm not taking ownership of it by saying I'm sick or my rheumatism or my arthritis or I've got this or I've got that or, you know, I remember one time one of the kids had a wart and, and someone said, hey, where's your, you know, how, oh, how's your wart? And he's like, don't put that on me. You know, I'm getting rid of that thing. It ain't mine. I'm not taking ownership of it. I mean, I know it sounds like it's crazy, but this is what the elite warrior does is we get down into the language that we're speaking. And what that does is it's a reflection of the thoughts that we think and the mindset that we carry. Now, people, people will people will listen to things that their body, they will acknowledge things that their body's done in the past that was unbelievable. We all have instances where our bodies have done something that was unbelievable, whether we ran faster than we ever ran or we ran longer than we ever ran. We swam longer or faster than we ever. We, we've done something in our lives that that defied our own belief. Right. Yet we I drove past believe. 12 Bojangles without stopping. <laughs> 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 yet we yet we won't believe that we can do things like fight off sickness. Right. Like you, 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 you commanded your body to do something you had never done before, whether it's a personal record in the sporting event or whatever. You, you commanded, demanded, you prepared your body to do everything. You told your body during that event that you were going to get through this, right? But I can't tell my event, my body, that I can beat this sickness, that I can go through this or I can go through that or, or I'm, or I'm going to fight this off or fight that off. So even in your victories, you ignore the possibilities. And that's what baffles me about people that try to to engage in a conversation with me when I'm talking about what is possible, what is not possible. And they sell themselves short, even even ignoring what they've done themselves in the past. Well, and, and, and I'll even take it even further. Dutch, let's drill it down even further. If you're potty trained, you've dominated your body to do something that your body didn't do before uh, by not messing yourself anymore. If you ever get up to go to work when you don't feel like it, the alarm goes off, you got up and you went and did something, you've, you're making your body do stuff it doesn't want to do. You've already done it. So, right, I don't get and, and, and your mind had a tremendous amount to do with that. When you're talking <laughs> right. about learning how to walk, when you learn how to walk, it wasn't just a physical challenge. It was a mental challenge. Your mind had to send the messages and the, the directions to your different body parts, right? So it all began in the mind. So everything you were able to over, overcome, every physical challenge you were able to overcome began in the mind. And that's what we're trying to get people to understand, that, that whatever you think is not possible. Then it ain't. It, 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 as, as absolutely not. But it's not, it's not impossible because you said it was impossible. It's just because for you. you Exactly. But we ask those happen. questions. Is it impossible or is it just impossible for you? Like and, I and, get and coaching class. They get hadn't mad. even tried it. Yeah, and, they get and, mad at that. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Andrew, the, the, the truth is they haven't even tried. No. They've just told themselves without any effort, without any failure or anything, they told themselves that they couldn't do it, that it wasn't possible. They never even tried it. Yeah, somebody just texted in honest assessment equals ouch. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. But it's a good ouch. It really is. It's my favorite ouch. I mean, I'm I I, I I'm addicted to the honest assessment because that's the only way I can make course corrections and get better. You, you know, it, it's funny when I was uh when I, we had we first began to have children, and the doctors were telling us to, and, and different friends and family members saying, "Hey, put the put the child on the floor, and and on you know on the blanket, let them kind of explore, look around, and 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 so they can't do a lot of things physically, but they said their mind is going to work. They're looking at everything in that room. They're looking at all the things they want to touch one day. They're looking at the things they're going to pull up on eventually. That they're looking at the places they're going to go eventually, and their mind is going to work. It's such a powerful, powerful thing, and that's what you're doing. That's what you need to allow your mind to do when you face challenges in your life. You need to allow your mind to go to work. You need to visualize these different things, visualize these challenges, and you need to visualize what you want and then let your mind go to work. Right, because when you say I can or it's impossible or I have to or you, I, we just I can't see. How, this is another one. I just can't see it. <laughs> well, you just shut it down. Your brain says, okay, because your genius brain will never go against your, you know, your genius self. And your genius self said we can't do it or you can't see it happening. So it just shuts down and says, oh, roger that. We can't see it. It's over. Mm -hmm. yep, you know, that's and, it. And that's all dilute, is you're diluting yourself. And this is the thing that bugs me. It's, you know, I, I'd rather have a little wildfire than no fire at all. So listen, if you come to me with these fantastic wild pipe dreams that are just seems impossible, I'd rather have that than 
what the masses come to us and they just can't see it. And they're afraid, they're afraid, they're afraid, Dutch. And I hear this all the time. They'll tell me their big dream that they gave up on because they don't see how how they could like provide for their family and the certain lifestyle that they're used to now doing this thing that they don't really even like to give up. The, so you're selling out your dream for, you're settling, right? You're settling for a lesser life uh, because you're afraid to let, like the monkey with the banana in the jar, mm -hmm. you're afraid to let go of the banana. And listen, there's bananas everywhere in the jungle. They're literally falling off the trees. Please yep. come up with a fantasy. I'd rather have that than this delusional thinking that you can't do anything because the human machine is such a high performance engine that you literally can do anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I just wish everyone could go back to, uh, again, I'm going to bring up the baby incident again, when everyone could go back to when you're a baby, because I want to sit there just for a second. When you could literally do nothing, you could literally do nothing, and that's when the most planning was going on. I mean, do we do we even get that? Can we can we envision that when we could do nothing as babies except for be carried around, poop all over ourselves, and do all that stuff? That's when the most planning. That's when the mind was most at work. When we had nothing and we could do nothing, and now we have all these resources, we have all these capabilities, and we shut the most powerful thing down. That's that's just sad. It's very sad, and, and you know what, and. Uh Man, I, I, I don't know. I, you know. <sighs> All right. I, yeah, I'm not going to get I, – I can't do it. I'm not going to get that – you know, I save that for the coaching calls because I don't want to scare the audience off. So I'm going to save that for, for, for the folks because it's really – it is mental toughness. It's not a vacation, although you could live the rest of your life like it is vacation once you make these shifts in your mind. Yep. I, I just – it – it frustrates me, Dutch. I got to be honest with you. When I look at people that are geniuses and I see all the huge potential and the huge upside and they doom themselves with their thought process and their mouth, the language that they use, and they're deluding themselves thinking that they can't do stuff. You know, the, the funny thing is the most difficult thing is that we, we are empowered by others to speak, to speak into their lives, right? Yeah. And, and, and that is, that's a blessing. I consider huge, that a blessing. Huge, But walking around on a daily basis and hearing people do it where you have no right or you have no position to say that you just have to witness it, it's painful. It is painful. And we will be right back after this break. Dutch and I are going to go nurse our wounds. <laughs> you listen to the Get Warrior Tough radio show.